This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Sony Ericsson Xperia X10 for AT&T. If you've watched our other video reviews or visit our website and read our reviews, you know that we've already reviewed the X10, or X10A, which stands for America, but the version we looked at was an unlocked phone. That was before Sony Ericsson and AT&T announced that they would be offering the phone here in the U.S. via AT&T. So here's the phone again, and it's pretty much unchanged. It has some AT&T software added, but we're going to take a quick look at it again. So it's a 4-inch capacitive display, 800 by 480 resolution, which is quite nice. Same size as the Samsung Captivate, also an AT&T, that we took a look at last month. Here on the side we've got volume controls and your camera button. It's a nice design here. Kind of has fluid lines with the chrome and the soft touch back. Here's the 8.1 megapixel autofocus camera back here with an LED flash. The flash is nice to have. Up top, this is about the only shiny spot. It won't stay shiny for long once you handle it, but the power buttons here, the 3.5 millimeter stereo jack, and the USB, micro USB port is under this plastic pry off door. No cute little Samsung slider door there, sorry. And there's nothing going on on this side of the phone. If you want to remove the back on the phone, you just pry it off. I'll show you how to do that. Now you've got the SIM card, micro SD card slot here. You do have to remove the battery to get the micro SD card in and out, and the 1500 milliamp battery. And for size comparison here, we have the Motorola Droid X on Verizon on the left. This is an Android phone with a 4.3 inch versus 4 inch display, both running at pretty much the same resolution. Slightly different, but close enough. So obviously the 4.3 inch phone is going to be bigger, and this is pretty much the same size as the Samsung Captivate Galaxy S family phone. It's the thinner end of the Droid X. Droid X does taper a lot on the side, so at this end it is thicker. So among Android super phones with fast CPUs and big screens, you know, they're all pretty large. This is no exception, but it, it's more handleable and pocketable than some of the 4.3 inch monsters out there. The Evo, of course, being even bigger than this as well. This runs Android 1.6. Unfortunately, that's a pretty old version of Android. Uh, Sony Ericsson has customized it quite a bit with their Mediascape and Timescape software and some other software. It has a 1 gigahertz Snapdragon processor. It puts it up there with other super phones like the Evo, the Droid X, and the Captivate. They're all 1 gigahertz, so they're running on different brands of CPUs. This doesn't have particularly a lot of internal storage, so you're going to rely on your micro SD card storage. As you saw, we have the 8.1 megapixel camera on here. It's the usual GPS, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi. GPS works both with both Google Maps and AT&T Navigator. And here you see the selection of applications. I've added some apps on here, but the AT&T apps include AT&T Family Locator, AT&T Maps, which is the free version of AT&T Navigator that lacks spoken turn-by-turn -turn directions. AT&T Navigator itself costs 10 bucks a month. It's powered by Telenav, gives you very good spoken turn-by-turn -turn directions. You do also have Google Maps on here, which gives you OK spoken turn-by-turn -turn directions. Got support for Gmail here, IMAP and POP3 email as well. And we've got Office Suite right there. AT&T likes to put Wear and Yellow Pages Mobile on phones, so there it is, and their usual mobile banking, and mobile TV, Moby TV rather, mobile video, which is AT&T's formerly known as CV service, is streaming media, and that comes with your data plan. So we're going to take a look at that and see how that looks on the nice large display. And we'll just pick something from the ASPN channel. And this is going to stream over AT&T's HSDPA 3G network. Not a particularly high quality clip, so it doesn't look very good. Surprise that AT&T isn't streaming a higher quality clip to this device. Let's see if we can find something that looks a little bit better than that. We have mechanical buttons here, by the way. Instead of the usual four Android buttons, we just have three. The search button has been omitted. Let's try out a CNN clip and see how that looks.
Okay, pretty low quality stream here. It's watchable, but it's not super sharp. You can hear the speaker there. It's not super loud or full. Sonny Erickson being a music oriented company, we're kind of surprised. But we're going to take a look now at Mediascape, which you can access right from the front screen here, along with Timescape, which is your social networking. We will take a look at that first since we're here. And this presents your Twitter and Facebook feeds, all has a little index card each tweet or status update. And it works pretty quickly, and if you want to see something, Particularly, you just tap on it and bring it up. And now we'll take a look at Mediascape. As you can see, you can play video here, music, and take a look at any photos you've taken. We're going to start out looking at the music. There's some clips that came with the phone. You've got recently played, you have recently added, your favorites, most often played, and a selection of pretty much everything that's here. So we'll just tap on that. This is at max volume. Not super duper full. The volume's okay though. It is loud enough to be heard in car if you're using this for navigation as long as you have a reasonably quiet car like a sedan. And now we're going to take a look at the video player here. Which is a lot better than the stock Android video player. It's a pretty beautiful screen. Sharp and colorful. Not super AMOLED, but nice. My phone does have an ambient light sensor, and as you saw, it has an accelerometer as well, and a proximity sensor. So it's pretty capable. We did see some frame drops there when we were playing video. It's pretty capable. This has a 1 gigahertz Snapdragon CPU versus the Hummingbird 1 gigahertz CPU that's in the Samsung Captivate. I have to say the Captivate is a bit faster phone. Now part of that has to do with the fact that this guy is just running Android 1.6 and each successive version of Android has gotten faster. So it'd be great to see what happens if Android 2.1 or maybe even 2.2 ever became available for this phone. I believe 2.1 is in the works. Don't know about Froyo 2.2. So it's not quite as fast as the Captivate, and the screen is not as, whoa, super AMOLED looking saturated and colorful. But it's a nice, solidly built phone, and it has good reception. In fact, it has a bit better reception than the Captivate. So if you live in a reception-challenged area, Sony Ericsson gets points there. Call quality is also very good. We'll take a look at the dialer. And that's been skinned by Sony Ericsson, too. I wouldn't mind if it was a little bit more high contrast. I mean, the numbers are easy to see, but the dividers and the letters are a little bit faint. But it's not bad. You've got your access to call log, full contacts listing, and your favorite people right there. We'll take a quick look at the web browser. There's nothing really terribly different here from Android web browsers and other platforms, other than the fact that this is running 1.6. So some of the, the improvements that we've seen in later versions of Androids are not here yet. We'll visit our own site, which we bookmarked. The biggest loss is that there is no pinch zooming that was not available in Android 1.6 and Sony Ericsson did not write any custom drivers to enable that. So there you see. Scrolling is pretty smooth. It's, it's not as super fast though and zippy. And sometimes it gets ahead of me compared to the Captivate. Again, this is something that, that Android 2.1 could probably fix. And if you want to zoom, this is not going to work. You're going to have to use these guys to zoom in and zoom out. So that's the Sony Ericsson Xperia X10. It's available now on AT&T. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website to read the full review.